This is the most unscientific discussion I've ever had in my life. Well, why don't, we get, I mean, why don't is, we get some Am I on the doctors or am I on some kind of show? I just go you this is seriously, to our producers. guys, stop for one second. That is not science, that's a lie, Travis. And I what you are doing is lying to this public. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So I was super excited to see this episode of The Doctors. Uh, you know, it's two interests of mine. Angie and I were on The Doctors a few years back, and I've been debunking all these what the health debunkers. So when I saw way back on October 3rd, Dr. Garth Davis, who appeared with Kip Anderson on this episode for What the Health, Dr. Garth wrote in his blog that same night, what a nightmare it was. It felt like a hit job on him. And he's complaining about how the saddest thing is how little these TV doctors know about the research. So let's jump right into it. Uh, and you and, and you had an, an obligation, I believe, Kip, as a director to your viewers to change people's minds. Well, I have an obligation to set the record straight so that people don't die. I'm a physician. I'm a pediatrician. I take care of obese children. This movie is an unabashed attempt to market a vegan diet to the American public. So if having three doctors up on the stage while keeping Dr. Garth Davis down below wasn't enough, they had to get Dr. Lustig in via satellite to give his low carb propaganda nonsense. The question here is whether or not it's good from a metabolic standpoint and whether or not it causes disease or reverses disease. As far as preventing and reversing disease, it's not even a debate at this point. A vegan diet, a whole food plant-based diet has been shown to prevent and reverse 14 of the 15 leading causes of death. Can I just address your comment that we are patently false? Because I've got so much science to address that. So you say that sugar can't cause diabetes, but there was a recent meta-analysis, 16 studies, Sugar actually decreased the amount of diabetes in that meta-analysis. In the EPIC study, okay. the EPIC study, 500,000 people found 12 years replacing 5% of their fat with fructose, which Dr. Lustig hates like crazy, dropped their diabetes rate 30%. And all Lustig could try to do is lie and say that Dr. Garth is relying on studies that were funded by the sugar industry. Turns out that there are 34 studies that sh where 33 of them say there's no effect and they're all paid for by the sugar industry. There's only one that says there is. When you look at the ones that are independently funded, 26 of them say there is an effect of sugar and diabetes. So next, Dr. Stork calls out Dr. Garth Davis for being a hypocrite. Dr. Davis, to, to not acknowledge that, okay, if we're going to say industry-funded studies are a bad thing when it comes to eating meat, but then we're going to say industry-funded studies about sugar. None so Dr. Stork thinks he's got them now. None of the well, studies, I mentioned, none of the studies I mentioned were industry-funded, and I never, ever mention industry-funded studies. I do not believe in industry-funded studies. Well, no surprise, Lustig and Stork are both lying there when they say Dr. Garth Davis is referring to, is relying upon studies that were industry funded. That's just simply not so. So at least we got out of the way here. Industry funded studies, bad. At one egg equals five cigarettes. And that was kind of the hyperbole where you just lump everything together. Yeah, pretty much every debunker of what the health I covered had issues with this claim from the movie. Let's see how Dr. Garth responds here. It's priceless. Do you, do, do you know that study? Correct. I went back and I read so it. Where I was actually... that study from? So it was from I read... Harvard, from the health profession study, mm -hmm. and from the woman's nurse's health study. Correct, but what Using will a comparative it... analysis, comparative risk analysis, it was a non-industry funded study and that's real science. Walt Willard, who's the chair of the Department of Nutrition at Harvard School of Public Health, where I did my public health Dr. degree, Willard. basically has done a study that shows that people who consume eggs don't have a higher risk of mortality. Another study just came out with 44,000 people okay. that showed all-cause mortality was less than people who and consume who funded one egg that per study? day. Let's see who funded that study. But who that wasn't that, Iran. Who funded it wasn't that funded study? by industry. That was Everyone's talking at the same time, but I'll play it back. Listen, she's saying it was not funded by industry. Who funded, that, who funded that study? Funded by industry. That was an egg that industry was, funded no, study. You no, guys but, talk about but the point unreal. Is that unreal. You can well, fortunately, Dr. Garth was kind enough to link to the study in his blog. And if you look at the conflict of interest listed for the study, indeed, there are at least two sources of funding from the egg industry. I actually have friends who are vegan, and all they eat are 
processed sugary foods, yeah. and, and they are not healthy. No. That might be the case, Travis, but that's not the type of vegan diet that they were promoting in this movie. It was a whole food, plant-based diet. And we get thousands, if not 10,000s of emails and comments across the board that within, not even months, within weeks and months of watching the film, going whole foods, plant-based, they're reversing their diabetes, they're getting off their, their medications, they're feeling better than they ever have. And that's called doing a public well, service. Next, the doctors accuse Kip and Dr. Garth of being blinded by their vegan bias. It felt to me like it was just talking to doctors on one side who had one perspective. And so as much as I love the documentary, I kept saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, what about the other side? Don't you think that you made this movie with a little bit of bias? I mean, don't you think that you, as a vegan for 10 years, it was sort of uh, swayed in that direction? So let's talk about bias. When our friend Brian Turner was on The Doctors earlier this year discussing his acne reversal on a vegan diet, he was not allowed to say the word vegan. All he could say was taking more water in and having more vegetables. Things now start to heat up between Dr. Garth Davis and the rest of the doctors. I think hearing so much nonsense, so much ignorance is really starting to weigh on them. We have shown that if you take sugar out of kids' diets oh and replace it with starch, their insulin resistance went away, the atherogenic particle called small dense LDL disappeared, their triglycerides were cut by 46%. We have causation. This yeah. isn't correlation, Dr. Davis. All yeah. of your studies that you have mentioned are all correlative, not causative. No, I've this got is causative causation. Studies. I've if Dr. Lustig would just shut up there via satellite, one would be able to hear Dr. Garth respond and say, no, not all my studies are correlational. He has causation studies as well. You said in the movie that sugar does not cause diabetes. It is an out and out falsehood. Hey, can I ask you something, Dr. Lustig? How did your control group do in that study? The control group was the patients you themselves. You didn't have a control group. That That's is right, because you couldn't science. have a control group. Listen. Dr. Garth's right. For this study to not have a control group is horrible science. And all Lustig could say is, we couldn't have a control group. Well, I read through the study too, and they had boys come into the hospital and they were given food for nine days. A control group would have been easy. Just have a different group of boys come in, give them food, but don't have the dietary tweaks that the experimental group had. Simple. How did you get the, how many calories you're gonna feed the children? We used a specific equation called so the Harris-Benedict equation, right. and then increased that by 10%. So you asked the kids what they ate, and you gave them the same amount of calories they told you they ate, which was actually a calorie deficit diet. It was not a calorie deficit a calorie, diet because they maintained their How many calories did you feed weight. them? 1,600 calories, right? We fed them 2,400 calories per day. You fed them 1,600 calories in your paper. This is a perfect and, example. And, for 2,400 no, yeah, calories. You, said you fed them 1,600 calories. We did not. Your, we did not. We have the this data. This is absolutely You academic. don't have the data. We have the data. I've got and the data. Now, Indeed, Dr. Garth has the data. And if these kids were indeed calorie restricting, that alone will improve their insulin readings, despite eating a high carb or a high fat diet. When I say that there are a lot of studies linking meat to cancer, there are a lot of studies. So in 2004, the American Institute of Cancer Research, the World Health Organization, and the World Cancer Research Fund did a humongous study. And you gotta read the, the prologue, because they say, we have differences of opinion, but the opinions we put here are unanimous. After reviewing 800 studies, we tell you to only eat two thirds of a, of a serving of meat a week. In Okinawa, it's both humorous and disrespectful how that doctor shakes his head like that. In Okinawa, they have 80% of their calories from carbohydrates, 80%. But they eat meat. They eat they pork eat... once That's every meat. two to four weeks. Pork once every couple weeks. Well, I shut that other low carb health trainer guy out there. Well, now Dr. Stark really gets ripped a new one. You were so off on the science, in my humble opinion, because you say you say sugar doesn't cause diabetes and that carbohydrates don't cause people to be fat. And then you use science and you said that 80% of Okinawans eat rice as their primary uh, carbohydrate. No. That's just not true. Oh my God, Travis. Yeah, it's simply not true because that's simply not what Dr. Gar said. He didn't say 80% of Okinawans eat rice as their primary source of carbohydrates. Let me rewind it for you. In Okinawa, they have 80% of their calories from carbohydrates. 80%. All right, got that, Travis? 80% of their calories come from carbs. You're saying that Okinawans eat 80% of their diet is rice? It's not, it's actually sweet potatoes. It is sweet potatoes, and that's what I say yeah, in my you book. You said 80, I, said I have a quote. 
I can see the frustration in Dr. Garth's eyes there. I mean, they won't shut up and let him respond. Like, of course he knows it's sweet potatoes. He's written books about this. They, I, and then you, then you cite the rice diet problem. from Duke, my alma mater, and the truth is that it's such a low calorie restrictive diet it is not a locale. And, and, now, and I will this say is what, unbelievable because this is the most unscientific discussion I've ever had in my life. Why don't we get, I mean, this is, we get some Am I on the doctors or am I on some kind of show? I just go and use your to our producers. Guys, stop for one second. That is not science. That's a lie, Travis. And what you are doing is lying to this public. Awesome job there, Dr. Garth, calling them out, calling Travis Stork out for being a liar and lying to his viewers. And furthermore, them just lying at you and not giving you an ample opportunity to respond to those lies. I'm surprised you stayed as chill as long as you did. And that's why I gotta treat them after. No, I, they get I, I read everything on it. And then I read your quotes and I disagree with you. Travis, I can make you diabetic right now with a euglycemic clamp and an infusion of fat. Let's talk Actually, so people let's can talk understand. To Dr. Let's talk about well, let's just talk to Dr. Lustig. He's the one that knows about sugar and diabetes. Well, let's move on anyway. Let's not even talk to Dr. Lustig. You say excess sugars or simple carbohydrates will not lead to diabetes or obesity. But the statement is patently false that sugar can't cause diabetes or obesity. You can't make those statements. Yes, he can make those statements because as he's shown, he has plenty of non-industry funded studies to support those statements. You can't make those statements and I, then expect the scientists to agree I've got with you. Tons you can't. of science to support it. Next, Dr. Garth is shocked as he wrote in his blog that this doctor is trying to argue that we should be eating foods that the WHO has labeled as class one and two A carcinogens. As Dr. Garth wrote in his blog, how absurd to argue that we should be eating carcinogens. So the incidence of colorectal cancer is 5%. Even causing this, you know, causing processed meats 50 grams a day increases the risk by 18%. That takes you to 6%. It's not a huge risk. And I think when you take these numbers out of context and you cherry pick the studies, it can be very scary to people. And it's a very confusing landscape. It oh, should be God. scary. Hold on one second, Kim. We have, we have an absolute epidemic of colon cancer you showing up in younger and younger speak, people. Please, and Dr. you don't Davis? think that we need to tell people I think that it's reasonable colon to cancer tell people, is a potentially but, but large risk? But the methodology risk? of equating it to tobacco. Sounds like she believes we shouldn't warn people about the risks of these foods, huh? Dr. Davis, you, we all know as physicians <laughs> that there are so many studies out there and everyone can cherry pick one I'm research pick. report, okay. one study. So why is the World Health Organization point? studying 900 studies and they're cherry picking? Oh, I get it. So when vegan doctors and researchers present facts about vegan diets being healthy and meat-based diets not being healthy, that's cherry picking. But when these doctors pull out studies that are funded by the egg board and dairy industries, that's not cherry picked, that's hypocrisy. And in fact, Kip sums this up beautifully here. It's not cherry picking, it's, it's essentially painting for gold in a murky, murky river of industry funded studies like that and it took a long time to find this. The bottom line is that eggs cannot legally even be called safe. So post your questions and comments down below. How do you think Dr. Garth Davis handled this hit job upon him and Kip on the Dodgers? I think Dr. Garth was amazing. Calling Travis Stork out to his face as a liar and lying to his viewers. And in fact, I wanna go out to you next time, Dr. Garth, when I do my blood test. I'll fly out to Texas, cause I wanna meet you. And hit the like button too, if you really appreciate how Dr. Garth handled himself, calling out Dr. Stork and the rest of the doctors to their faces, putting them on notice as liars and industry funded shills. So that's it for this episode, guys. Until next time, Dr. Stork and Lustig, keep it carb, guys, keep it carb. Yeah.